Get it up, swashbucklers. You're listening to Under the Crossbones, episode number 175. My name is Phil Johnson. I'm your host for the show and the ship's electrician each and every week. Got to be able to plug in the amps, right? Right. Uh, my guest on the show today is Ray Arnaud of Pirate Guitar Effects. Now, uh, here's here's the thing. If you normally skip through the beginning of this section of the show uh, because you don't want to hear me yakking about whatever, uh, I would I would suggest that you hang in there with me today before we get to the interview because I'm going to give you some information uh, that is going to be um, useful to you during the interview if you are not a guitar player uh, and do not understand uh, what we're talking about and some of the things we're talking about. So I want to give you some information up front so that you understand what the, what's going on in the interview, and that will make it more enjoyable for you. And there's going to be lots and lots of resources in the show notes this week at uh, underthecrossbones.com slash 175. Okay, so hang in there with me for a few minutes here. I am coming to you today from Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, where it is snowing and uh, minus all the degrees. It's freezing, freezing, you guys. Uh, It's not like crazy cold like they've been talking about on the news. Like on the news, they've been talking about, oh, it's minus 55 degrees. It's not minus 55 degrees. I guess when you take uh, the wind chill into account, it's I don't know. It's it's we've gotten down about a minus 16, uh, which for, hey, California boy, plenty cold enough, plenty cold enough. I, I'm done with that. Yeah, uh, it was a real struggle uh, to force myself to leave my nice, cozy, warm Airbnb apartment last night to go out and go to a comedy show. But I did. I did. Uh, and so the show's been going great. Uh, sold out shows, fantastic audiences, having such a great time at the gigs, uh, doing a few more. Uh, let's get the tour dates out of the way here first real quick. Uh, let me find them in my notes here because I got a lot of notes for today. Okay, uh, so January the 31st, I'll be at the Dairyland Brew Pub, Appleton, Wisconsin. That's this Thursday. Uh, February 1 and 2, both nights, I'll be at Dangerfields in Shakopee, Minnesota. And then back in California, February 7th, I'll be at the Rebel Kitchen, Livermore, California. February February 8th at Farley's in San Francisco, California, February 19th at the Vinyl Room in Burlingame, California, February the 21st at the Blue Lagoon, Santa Cruz, California, and February 23rd at Comedy Oakland in Oakland, California. So that's the tour dates. Uh, a lot of a lot of California any kind of stuff uh, coming up because I haven't booked a lot of road gigs, but there are some coming up. You can go check out all the tour dates at underthecrossbones.com. Click on that tour dates button, and that will show you all the places that I am going to be playing near you. Okay. So, oh, hey, you know, fun fact about uh, this is episode number 175. So fun fact about the number 175, uh, a flying disc used in Ultimate Frisbee, a regulation flying disc is 175 grams. Point number one. Point number two, the New York Yacht Club is 175 years old this year. And my personal favorite, point number three, uh, the Gibson ES-175 is a hollow body electric guitar and one of the most famous jazz guitars ever. They're beautiful. They sound fantastic. All right. So there's our 175 fun facts. Uh, If you are enjoying the show uh, and if you want to find out what that ship's electrician reference is, was at the beginning of the show, make sure you come on. Join us over on Facebook, facebook.com slash under the crossbones. On Twitter, we're at Under Crossbones. Uh, know that in that. And of course, uh, you can subscribe to the show in whatever podcasty app thing you're listening to this right now. Just click that subscribe button. You'll get the brand new shows automatically every Tuesday morning when they come out. And that is good for both of us. And of course, all the show notes for this episode will be at underthecrossbones.com slash 175. Uh, I am in an Airbnb here in Minneapolis, uh, and it's a beautiful apartment, very nice apartment uh, that I got a heck of a deal on for four nights. And uh, but it's very echoey, uh, like many nice places are uh, there. It's very echoey. So I am right now I am talking to you inside a closet. Yes, I am. Yes, I'm in the closet in the bedroom talking on a microphone uh, because it's less less echoey in here. And that is good for you. So we want to make sure that the sound sound is good. By the way, you know, when I, I cleaned I cleaned up my office uh, right after New Year's, right before New Year's, or sometime in that holiday section of the year there. Uh, I went there and I cleaned up my office, and I went listening back to a couple interviews I did in the meantime since then, and they're a little more echoey. Uh, so I'm going to put some padding in my office. Maybe I'll just load my office up uh, with more junk uh, again and uh, and make it sound better. But anyway, I have noticed that, and I will, uh, I will get on top of fixing that when I get home. 
So today on the show, like I said, Ray Arno from Guitar Pirate Effects. And uh, so we're going to talk about why he went with a pirate theme, uh, where he comes from. He's, we're going to talk about growing up in New Orleans. Uh, you can guess where the pirate theme comes from then. Uh, we're going to talk about the flag of Bimini <laughs> or the Bimini Republic, I guess, uh, and how that played into the pirate logo that is on the pirate effect. So there's a little bit of history. Uh, there's some fun stuff, but we are going to talk guitar stuff today which is a subject near and dear to my heart uh, because I am a guitar player. And if you are not a guitar player, I want you to hang in there for the rest of that stuff too because this is a very fun interview. We go a lot of different places. But I want to give you a little bit of guitar effects knowledge before we get into the interview so that you understand when we start throwing uh, throwing jargon around uh, and brand names and, and model names and things like that uh, so that you are up to up to uh, pace with us and know what's going on. Okay, so let's first talk about what is a guitar pedal. A, a guitar pedal is an effect pedal that sits down in front of the in front of the guitar player. We we turn it on and off with our foot, and it affects the sound of the what's coming out of the amplifier. So generally, an electric guitar will be plugged in first to the effect pedals, and then a chord will go from the effects pedals board to the amplifier and uh, and we have loads of different kinds of pedals there are hundreds thousands of different kinds of pedals and every guitar player wants all of them uh i have a huge i have a huge box of pedals at home in my studio and uh most of the time i play i record with plugins now uh we'll talk about that too and uh i I haven't turned my pedals on in a while but they are wonderful it's like uh, some people will collect jewelry or uh comic books or things like that there's always another one to get and they're all super cool, and we want all of them. Uh, so anyway, that's what guitar effect pedals do. We uh, we turn them on and off with our feet. And uh, certainly when I became a singer, I started using less effect pedals uh, because it's hard to sing and tap dance at the same time. So let's talk about a couple other things that are going to come up in this interview. Uh, we mentioned the brown sound a lot. And the brown sound, uh, not to be confused with the brown note. Uh, you can you can Google that if you want to find out what the brown note is uh, or Probably isn't his, uh, but the brown sound refers to Eddie Van Halen's guitar sound uh, that he, he got. Uh, it's very unique to him. People have figured out how to do it since then, but he used a very unique uh, combination of effects and and mods on his amps and things like that to get uh, what we call the brown sound. And it's a sound that everybody's after because it's very fun to play in. It's got a real slinky kind of feel when you're playing it, and uh, it's uh, it's a fantastic Fantastic. Yes, I said that word accidentally. It is a fun, fantastic sound uh, to get out of an amplifier. So uh, I'm going to put YouTube uh, videos for each of these things in the show notes. Uh, not that it won't be in the show notes where if you just click on your podcast player because they don't show up there for some reason. But if you go to the actual show notes at under the crossbones dot com slash one seven five, there's going to be videos for each of these things. So you can hear what they sound like and what they do. Uh, if you want to if you want to go that deep, plus additional links for information and all that kind of stuff there. So the next thing that comes up is the Klon Centaur. And the Klon Centaur is a uh, it's an overdrive pedal that was made in the 1990s and an overdrive pedal. uh, Well, it does two things. One, it can give a clean uh, just volume boost essentially to the sound or uh, an amplitude boost. And that sends a hotter signal to the amplifier and that can enhance the overdrive, the distortion that comes from the amplifier uh, back out at the listener. Uh, The other thing it can do is it can actually distort the sound within the pedal. And then send that to the amplifier, and that changes the sound too. So the Klon Centaur is a very highly regarded uh, pedal for doing that uh, as an overdrive pedal. And they're very hard to find. And if you want a real one, they go for upwards of $3,000 each these days. So uh, that was from the 1990s, the Klon Centaur. Uh, The next thing that comes up is the Echoplex EP3. And this is a tape delay effect uh, that was originally released in 1961. And uh, what a tape delay does is uh, it's a a delay unit. When you play a note, it'll play the same note again, and it may do it. You can set up how many times it plays it again. Uh, You can set up the time between the replay. So if I go bup on the guitar, it'll go bup, bup. Or I can make it go bup, 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 right like that. So that's a delay unit. Well, the original ones used a tape uh, recording mechanism. So there's a box with recording tape in it and recording heads, just like a cassette player, say, and it would record it on one head and then play it back on the next head. And you could set the distance between those heads uh, to take care of the time between repetitions of the signal. And so that's what a tape delay does. And if you want to hear um, some really good examples of the EP3 in particular, 
The AP3 was out uh, between 1970 and 1991. Uh, the original one, the, the original EP1 was 1961. 1970 to 1991 was when the EP3 was out. That's the one we're talking about in the, in the interview. Uh, listen to Andy Summers from The Police. Uh, Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin in their 70s stuff. Brian May from Queen, all very famous uh, Echoplex, Echoplex EP3 um, users. And so uh, – and and used as a – we talk about it also used as a preamp, uh, which it just colors the sound is all. The other thing we talk about is a variac, and this is part of Eddie Van Halen's uh, brown sound. But basically a variac just changes the voltage amount that's being uh, – that the, the amp is playing with essentially, and that can change the sound of the uh, of the amplifier itself. It's a very subtle difference uh, unless you really know what you're looking for. So when you check out the video for that one, you might go, OK, I don't hear a difference between those two. But that's OK. Uh, it does a thing. And we uh, to also talk about the Marshall Plexi. Uh, this is an amplifier. It's the Marshall Super Lead Model 1959 that was released in 1965. And the reason they invented it was because Pete Townsend from The Who required a louder 100-watt amp. They were making 50-watt amps prior to that. Uh, and he needed that louder amp, and not because he was being a rock star, but because they didn't have PA systems back then, uh, which I can't even fathom. I have a full PA system in my shows required in my contract and it's just me and a mic and an acoustic guitar uh the beatles were playing shea stadium with no pa system uh just amplifiers and that is mind-boggling so the who needed a louder uh amplifier pete town pete townsend went to marshall and said i need a 100 watt amp and the um the marshall super lead model 1959 is what they came up with them uh, for him. They call it a plexi uh, because the front the front of it used a plexiglass panel that was kind of shiny and stuff. So that's why they call it a plexi. And the last thing we talk about is the Ampeg SVT. This is a bass amplifier, 300 watts. Holy cow! Yeah, released in 1969. They're still in production. Uh, there's been various changes and you know all that kind of stuff. And uh, they are stupid heavy. Holy cow, man. Uh, they come with a, a, a head, the actual amplifier part with the knobs on it, and then a cabinet, which has the speakers. And uh, most players will use an 8 eight by 10 cabinet. That means eight 10-inch speakers. Uh, the thing is about five feet tall, uh, heavy as all can be. And I have loaded them up and down stairs in ridiculous nightclubs all over the place. Because I used to have a bass player that played an SVT. And yeah, you don't want to do that. Get something smaller. Definitely get something smaller. All right. So uh, that's what we're going to be talking about during the interview. Uh, real quick here. We are sponsored today by Parada Clothing. Uh, and uh, if you need you need some pirate clothing, don't we all? Right. Yes. Their brand new website is a pirate utopia of shirts, hats, clothing, swimwear, and more. All steeped in the lore of pirates and treasure and all that good stuff. And it's perfect for your next Caribbean cruise or trip to the Keys. And they got new gear added weekly, so there's always something new to check out there. Go to ParadaClothing.com. Be sure to click the ship wheel on the website to get on a Blackbeard's treasure hunt, get you some discounts. And uh, and that's what you got to do. Go over to ParadaClothing.com. And if you want to get exclusive discounts, very easy. Just text the word pirate to 21 Zero zero zero. Text the word pirate to two one zero 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 and you will get exclusive discounts from paradaclothing.com. Go check it out. If you want to help support the show, hit the uh, support page under the crossbones.com slash support. Uh, throw a donation in the PayPal box. Click the Amazon banner. Buy yourself something nice. Amazon kicks me back a few shekels. Or if you want to be a sponsor of the show, like Parada Clothing and Pirate Radio, the Treasure Coast, and all those good folks, all that information is right there for you. Okay? So uh, this has been plenty long enough, uh, but I think I gave you some good information that will help you during the interview. So thanks for hanging in there for that, and let's get into it. This is my talk with Ray Arno of Pirate Guitar Effects. You are the owner of Pirate Guitar Effects. Uh, tell me a little bit about the company and what you are making. Sure. Uh, I am the owner. Uh, we opened up Pirate Guitar Effects back in, I guess it would be t late 2016, started kicking around the idea in 2015. Actually, uh, I owned a previous retail company called MusicGearFast.com. Okay. Uh, and we kind of morphed out of the, the, the retail side of the business and had some ideas or some pedals, the plank being the first one, and uh, we just released the peg leg. Uh -huh. um, and really, it's to recreate create some of these older uh, iconic sounds 
um, that, that most guitar players are very familiar with. Uh, you know, everybody knows the, or has heard of the claw and pedal or the brown sound or, you know, just the, the various tones that are out there in the guitar world. And we set out to actually start and try to come up with ways to recreate those in the pedal form because not everybody can go buy, you know, a 69 Plexi or something. Right. right. Um, so everybody, we, we tried to come up with some of these ideas that, uh, that over time we'll just recreate some of those iconic, iconic sounds. Okay. So the, the pedal market is an interesting one today because there are, uh, a zillion different plugins and different ways of getting those sounds beside just an amp and a, a pedal. So what made you want to go into the, the pedal business? You're absolutely right. There's, it's a very crowded marketplace right now. Um, there's a lot of boutique guys out there that are just like me building these one off hand built jobs. Um, what we decided is take a slightly different angle, um, and go with combinations or recreations of, uh, from the past that may have involved two or three or four different effects. A great example would be, uh, our first release, the plank. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a clone clone, a uh-huh. clone centaur clone. Um, along the, with an Echo Plex EP3 preamp. So everybody's super familiar with like uh, Eddie Van Halen's brown sound. Sure. Um, he used a, basically a Variac um, on his old, on, on, on old Plexi amp and turned the power of the voltage down essentially to, re, to get that really kind of off tone. And then he, on top of that, he used an Echoplex originally um, for his reverb and his echo tones. Um, that Echoplex preamp add to that sound. So we said, well, you know, if I wanted to recreate that via pedal, I would have to buy two different pedals today. I'd have to buy like a Plexi pedal, then I'd have to buy an EP3 um, preamp type pedal. Um, so we went and decided, well, why can't we put both of those in one housing and give it enough versatility to where you can use either or or both at the same time and rearrange the effects and do all the different, uh, the, the signal chain, I should say, and do all the great things that, you know, you could do if you had two pedals. We just put it in one housing. Same thing we do with the latest release. We took a, uh, I, I'm a bass player, you know, from, from way back when, and my favorite sound is the old Ampeg SVTs, sure, yeah. um, but nobody wants to, nobody wants to look around, you know, an, uh, an Ampeg SVT head and then the, you know, the, the, the cabinets that go with right. it to get that tone. Um, so what I did is I started experimenting with some different combinations of, uh, of overdrive pedals and, uh, compression pedals and came up with the idea as well. I can get a very similar tone through almost any amp, um, using this peg leg pedal, using those two kind of effects. So same thing. We put them both in one housing, made it to where you can take the uh, effect and you can put it in any order you want. You can dial straight compression, straight overdrive or any combination in between. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that is a, that is a pretty unique angle on it. So uh, let's, let's back up for a second and tell me and tell my audience about why you named it pirate guitar effects. The guitar effects part is obvious, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the pirate theme kind of came around by accident. Honestly, um, we were kicking around some ideas and hadn't really come up with a name for the first pedal. Um, hadn't really come up with the graphic design. We're just really playing with tones. And I ran across the Beninian flag, which is the graphic on the front of the, uh, the plank, the red pedal. Okay. Um, that and that kind of had me go down this road of well, what does that look like? Nobody knows who the Beninian Republic is. Um, so what is what is similar? And ended up going down the whole idea of pirates and started doing a lot of research on different pirate flags. Everybody knows the Jolly Roger, but there's so many different versions of that depending on who the pirate was, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So so we just kind of started going down that road and, and, and looking at those things. I'm from New Orleans. Um, there's a great little uh, uh, a great little history about, you know, Jean Lafitte and all that kind of stuff in New Orleans. And, you know, the hideout and everything. There's even a little road in the French Quarter called Pirate's Alley uh, off, off, the main, off one of the main streets there. Um, so there's a lot of history that goes kind of behind that. And we just thought it, was, it would be fun to, to go down the road of the, the pirates. There was nobody out there doing anything pirate themed in the pedal world. Mm-hmm. So another kind of angle, yeah. <laughs> I guess, if you will, to try and make us a little bit unique. Um, so, you know, some of the things that we're going to release in the future are going to be aimed to continue to be aimed at the whole, the whole pirate theme. Um, we've got a, what's called a chain shot fuzz. 
coming out in the not too distant future, which will be a fuzz pedal. Uh-huh. Uh, but again, named after you know Chain Shot. So so just continuing down that whole uh, that that whole theme. That's interesting. Yeah, it's uh, I was looking at some of the reviews of your pedals, and it, and having just that name and that theme makes every reviewer start their review with some sort of pirate speak, and then apologize yeah. for it, <laughs> and then finish exactly. the review. <laughs> uh, which is absolutely. We did some. Uh, we had. Uh, um, uh, Gear Man dude did a video for us, a demo for us, and he, you know, he starts it all with A, hey, you know, and uh-huh. then you're absolutely correct. Every person who's reviewed it, um, either written or video, kind of does the same thing. They start out with some sort of pirate speak. Yeah, that's very funny. Uh, so the the pedals are are very cool, and uh, so with the the pirate theme, that is that was the that's the Bimini flag is a, a guy chopping another guy's head off. That's amazing. Vital. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is a that is it's a very old African republic. Um, yeah. And uh, that doesn't exist anymore. Um, so that was the flag of the actual country. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. That is not a that is not a flag that says "Welcome, come to our country." Um, <laughs> no, it's not. Right. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, I really didn't know that about that logo. That's funny. And then so the um, the uh, the the peg leg one. Then you obviously just were full on pirate theme and and just full kind of, on. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Absolutely. We, we we figure if we're gonna do this, we're gonna embrace it one hundred and ten percent. So yeah, the the peg leg comes out full on graphic, uh, that we had created for us. Um, you know, obviously the, the pirate, right. Guy's got a peg leg Come right. on, you know, uh, the only thing we couldn't figure out a way to get the a parrot on the shoulder though, and still have <laughs> it look right. Um, considering it's just an all black logo, but, uh, we'll figure that one out in the future at some point. Well, there's gotta be a stomp box called like a squawk box or something in, in the future that would, uh, fully fit Absolutely. a pirate. pirate. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Great. So the, the, the pedals that you're making are um, very utilitarian. They're sort of the, the toolbox pedals that every guitar player should have in their arsenal. Why, why did you choose to go that particular route with sort of this compression, distortion, fuzz, you know, that kind of thing, rather than some of the more like, we're going to do a crazy delay pedal or something like that? You know, I... You said it when you started, it's, it's, it's utilitarian for the guitar player. These are pedals that every guitar player wants to have on their board. A crazy delay pedal or, you know, so, some weird wah, like, a, a, you know, like the old uh, the, the whammies or the digital whammies. Uh-huh. Um, something like that isn't an everyday item for most guitar players. I guess if you're Reeves Gabriel and you play a lot of noise, that's <laughs> fine. But, uh, it, it, but for everyday guitar players, they want something that's going to give them some versatility out of the one amp that they own. Um, that's going to allow them to do 90% of the song, you know, you know, 90% of the tones out there, whether it's, you know, the, the blues or, or hard rock or metal or whatever, they need something that will, that can do all those things. And, you know, it's very, uh, distortion and overdrive and, uh, the, the, the kind of a preamp for a clean, uh, clean boost. And then the comp- compression pedal, those are everyday pedals. Yeah. We'll get into, we'll get a chorus in the works. We'll get into a chorus here at some point. Um, but it'll be very utilitarian. It's it'd be a straight up chorus pedal, but along the lines of like the old, uh, uh, some of the old Ibanez, uh, the old Japanese Ibanez chorus pedals that were oh, yeah. super cool and super icy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those were great. Um, that's, yeah, that's interesting. And I guess that makes the theme that much more important because if somebody just puts out another distortion pedal without something to kind of latch on to, that must make it much more difficult to market. Absolutely. And, and that's the, that the reason we chose to release the plank with that graphic was to catch somebody's eye. Uh-huh. I want to catch your eye because we're just noise, you know, otherwise we're just noise in an already very crowded market. Right. So tell me a little bit about getting into that market first. Why? Uh, so you you owned a music gear website before uh, and, and you made this choice to go into pedals. Uh, what kind of challenges are there going into that pedal market besides just the fact that there's so many people in it? Uh, you know, for me, not having an engineering background, that was okay. the biggest challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Finding folks that could help me come up with these circuits and help me fulfill these ideas uh-huh. um, that I get in my head. You know, I wanted to sound like this. Um, but I don't know how to make, I can't translate that to a, you know, to a circuit board. I can't translate that into a functional pedal. Um, so finding folks that can help 
with that engineering feat was probably our biggest challenge. Um, from there, you know, we are, we, like I said, we already had a, a, a retail site called musicgearfast.com and we morphed out of that slowly. So we already had a lot of the marketing stuff. We un- had that understood, um, had the, how to build a website understood uh, all that kind of get press releases. All that was already done. The hardest part though, for me was actually the actual engineering and getting, it still is a challenge for me to get what's in my head down to a functional pedal. Sure. And how did you go about finding those people? Uh, that I made when we were a retailer. Um, so, you know, we get a lot of help from different folks, uh, from different companies that is, is crowded as the industry is. Um, it's still pretty close knit for the boutique guys. Um, so, you know, it's not hard to reach out to somebody and say, Hey, I want to do this. Would you help me kind of develop that, that circuit or that whatever it is? Um, and uh, you'd be surprised how many, what we consider competitors say, yeah, yeah, let's keep, you know, let's push this a little bit harder. Huh, interesting. So tell me a little bit about the iteration process then of when you go in and you can say, okay, I want this to sound like a Klon sensor mixed with an Echoplex. And that's the starting point. But obviously the first iteration of that is probably not going to sound like exactly what you're looking for. So no, it, it, no. So that's, that becomes a complicated process of just creating a circuit and then slowly modifying that circuit. Uh-huh. Um, and you know, it, it, to, to get it to where we want, um, you know, one of the things uh, about pedals, uh, I don't care who, what pedal you have by it's never going to sound exactly like a cranked plexi, sure. you know, Marshall plexi. Yeah. It will never sound that way. That's the Marshall plexi sounds the way it does because it's, it is what it is. Right. Right. So we go through and we try to get as close as we possibly can. Um, but it is, it can be a lengthy p- process. You know, the, the, the peg leg took almost a year to develop. The plank took almost six months to develop. Um, we got lucky on the plank. It didn't take as long because we had a uh, gentleman we had worked with had uh, from Henretta engineer, Engineering had already uh, kind of developed a couple of circuits that he was using in different uh, versions of some of the pedals he sells, um, and uh, we were able to kind of come up over time uh, with it with the idea or with the sound that we have. Okay, here's something I've always wondered about the this pedal thing, especially when you're trying to do a sound alike pedal and then do something new with it. Are there any intellectual property concerns in trying to copy the sound of another pedal? Not really. Um, not that I've run across anyway. Um, you, you have to be careful, you know, when you use names. So, you know, when we talk about the Klon Centaur or the, uh, or the uh, EP3, Echoplex EP3, we have to be careful how we throw those names around, sure. uh, you know, because those are trademarked a lot of times and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, but, but as far as, I don't know that anybody's to my knowledge, has a trademark or a patent on a particular sound. I, uh-huh. I, that's one of the things that would probably be harder, hard to do, I would think. Yeah, uh, I know Harley Davidson tried it a few years ago. They tried to they tried to patent, uh, yeah, patent, it was patent or trademark. I can't remember which one they were trying for, but they were trying to uh, protect the sound of a Harley Davidson, and I don't think it was approved, so <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's one of those things that's, uh, it's, uh, that to me is, because it's subjective, right? It's, it's, that could sound totally different to you than the way it does to me, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, and I watched the, 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 the Gear Man guy a video this morning, and the, the plank pedal does, it has an amazing array of sounds uh, just by tweaking the knobs this way and that. So it's a really much more versatile pedal than I was expecting it to be. And I don't know what my question is there, but I, <laughs> I, I just really thought it was a great pedal. It, it, it no, it is. It's it's very very tweakable. If you want to use a you know a, a, an overused term, I think in the guitar world, uh-huh. you know, it's very tweakable. You can do a lot of things to that pedal, whether through the internal controls or the external controls, to to really start to dial in a specific sound that you want. And then you know then. You, throw that on top of whatever amp you're using solid state or tube. And there's a whole new world of sounds that can come out of it. Um, you know, it, it can go from that little slight bluesy growl to just screaming high gain, you know, 1980s Randall type stuff. Right. So, yeah. Um, it, it's, it's got everything in between. Um, and you know, and, and like all the pedals, it does some things better than others. You know, the, the sweet spot truly is kind of that, that, that brown sound, uh, uh, echoplex kind of combination tone. Yeah. And I guess the, the advantage of having a pedal like this 
is it's going to cost you way less than going out and buying a Variac and an Echoplex and a Klon and absolutely. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then going and taking that, you know, and re- retubing that head, you know, every year because the Variac burns through tubes, right? Sure. Um, so, you know, it, it, in the long run, yeah, it, it's going to be a lot cheaper than going out and doing all those things. That's that's great. So are you originally from New Orleans? I am. I was born and raised in New Orleans, yep. Tell me a little bit about growing up in a place like that, because that's a very unique city. <laughs> it's a great place to grow up. Um, you know, I, I grew up in the in, in the seventies and eighties, and uh, and and all the great things. You know, the, the Mardi Gras and and just the culture and the food and and just everything that happens down there. Um, it's a really great town. Uh, you know, I, I, I go back as often as I can. Um, but, uh, but it, I, I certainly, I certainly miss it a lot, yeah. <laughs> but it is a great place growing up. Where are you located now? I actually live in Wichita, Kansas these days. Oh. Um, so yeah, so, uh, I, I worked for, uh, uh, guitar center, uh, actually musician's friend for a long time and ended up in the Kansas city area and then okay. came down to Wichita for, uh, a, a, a day job, if you will, not too long ago. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And so growing up in new Orleans, how does that affect your musical upbringing? When did you start playing music? I I'm assuming you're a guitar player. Oh, I- <laughs> yeah, so I'm a bass player. So uh, okay. I, I started playing probably around 12 years old. Okay. Um, you know, in, in, in New Orleans, you know, it's a lot of blues, a lot of funk. You know, I grew yeah. up listening to bands like the Meters, you know, sure. um, or, or these great blues players that some folks have never heard of, like Brian Lee, you know, and, and uh, I just uh, – uh, you could, there were, you still can, but there were times where you could walk through the French Quarter in New Orleans and every bar had a band playing, had a uh-huh. live band, and you could go from spot to spot and hear some of these incredible musicians. You know, you could go to a bar like Tipitina, still can to this day, and, and, and go see, you know, George Porter and the running partners. Um, you can see some of these amazing players, um, whether it's the guys from the 70s and 80s or some of these new ones from the 90s and early 2000s and, and even now, you know, bands like Galactic. You know, I remember when Galactic first formed, and if you're familiar with Galactic, they're, they're an amazing band. Sure. Um, you know, so, and they formed back in the 90s, you know, and then, then I was, you know, I was so uh, there was the whole, I call it sludge metal. I don't know what you want to call it these days, <laughs> but there was the whole sludge metal scene, you know, with corrosion and conformity and, yeah. and, uh, and, uh, uh, exorder and, and then later down, you know, and, and some of those guys and crowbar and those guys, you know, all bands that I just love. So, you know, very, what I, I think what I tend to find folks that are from New Orleans have very eclectic musical taste. Um, you know, you know my, my wife calls my, my, all my music's on my phone and it just plugs into, to, to, into the stereo. Uh-huh. My wife goes at the phone of death. Cause you <laughs> never know what song is going to come on next. You know, yeah. if I just hit shuffle, it might go from, you know, uh, Carmine Barana into Crowbar into Lord, you know, so you just <laughs> never know what you're going to hear. Uh, I like that a lot uh, because my collection is very much the same way. I, my, my dad travels with me a lot on the road when I'm performing and he'll always be like, okay, we were just listening to Death Angel and now, what is this, Desi yeah. Arnaz? You know? <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. You know, it keeps it, keeps, it keeps it interesting. 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 And so, uh, growing up as a musician then, what uh, you said you were a guitar and bass player, right? You're correct. Okay, cool. So then what was your first distortion pedal? We all remember our first distortion um, pedal. <laughs> so it was a rip, yeah, it was a rip off of a Proco Rat. It was called a Ross Distortion. Okay. And it was a straight up Proco Rat rip off. Nice. Um, that was probably, geez, that was probably 19, like 1985 or 86 or something like that. Um, I got that in a, a tu- an electronic tuner at the same time. Um, which probably saved me more than anything was the tuner. Um, <laughs> you know, back then it was, it's not like today where you can just pull up a YouTube video and you can tune your guitar to a YouTube video. If you're just starting back then, you had to figure that stuff out on your own. Right. Yes. That's great. My, my first one was the boss. Oh, OD two. I think it was the yellow one. That oh, was yeah. that, the mixture yeah. of the overdrive and the distortion. God, I love that thing. Yeah. Zach Wilde's favorite uh, distortion pedal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was very versatile. I like that one a lot. So that's great. Uh, Very cool. And so where is the best place for people to pick up your pedals? Well, you can always get one from Pirate Effects, uh, PirateGuitarEffects.com. Um, you can get one from there. If you're international, we ha- do have dealers in Europe and uh, Japan. Um, so just need to Google it um, and go from there. 
Nice. And I will be uh, tagging Ale Storm and Red Rum and all those guys <laughs> in the post Perfect. for this one uh, because they should uh, they should definitely add these to their pedal boards. And uh, have you tried? I mean, there are, there are a large amount of pirate bands out there. The majority of them are very acoustic based, but uh, there are bands. The, the pirate metal thing is out there. Have you tried connecting with any of those artists? You know, I haven't, but if there's any listening to the podcast, feel free to shoot us an email at uh, pirateguitareffects at gmail.com, and I would be happy to talk to them. Nice. I'd love to get the pedal out there and some, you know, and some more pedal boards. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. So I'll make sure that that is linked up in the show notes. And is there anything I didn't ask you about that you want everybody to know? I think so. Um, that that's, that sounds like about it. Cool, man. Great. Well, I'm glad we got a chance to do this. I really appreciate your time. Absolutely, sir. Thanks for checking us out. You bet. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. And there it is, friends. That is my interview with Ray Arno of GuitarPirateEffects.com. To find out more about what they've got going on and pick up some for yourself, go to Pirate Guitar FX. That's the letters F and X. PirateGuitarFX.com. Uh, did you hear something in there you want to jump in on? Maybe you're a guitar player. You got some. I know if you're a guitar player, you got some comments about a Plexi. Or, uh, or an Echoplex, or a uh, uh, Centaur, you know, all that kind of, I know you want to jump in on that talk. Come join us over on Facebook, facebook.com slash under the crossbones, and uh, chip in your two cents there. That's always cool. So like I said, uh, hit the show notes, under the crossbones.com slash 175. I have uh, links, sound examples, videos of all this stuff that we were talking about in there, including the uh, pirate guitar effects pedals as well, so that you can check that out and uh, and learn a little bit more about what we guitar players play with, uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing. Man, I really want to really want to crank up an amplifier right now after listening to all that stuff. Really, all I have is my acoustic guitar with me. But it's going to sound amazing in this super echoey apartment, and I'll probably annoy the people upstairs. But whatever. I'm only here for four days. <laughs> uh, we are sponsored today by Pirate Radio of the Treasure Coast, WKKC-DB, playing the best music of today's hits and yesterday's classics. And Pirate Radio Talk, playing the best pirate shows, including Under the Crossbones, 24-7. All commercial free. Yeah. To listen, go to PirateRadioTheTreasureCoast.com or hit your favorite app store and pick up the Pirate Radio WKKC-DB app. Uh, that's for the music station. For the talk station, go to PirateRadioTC.com or pick up the Pirate Radio Talk in your favorite app store. And, of course, you can just ask, ask, you can just ask, sorry, you can just ask your Alexa device or your Google device uh, to play it for you in the way that you ask those things to do those things. All brought to you by iTreasure Radio, the very best digital media from independently owned stations at iTreasureRadio.com. All right. And that is our show for today. Thank you once again for tuning in. I appreciate it. I hope you got something out of this one. I know we went a little far afield from our normal subjects on here, but I thought it was fun, and I hope you learned some new things, got some new uh, stuff out of it. Maybe want to go pick up a guitar yourself like me. That's what I'm going to do right after we're done here. Yeah. And uh, and so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we got lots of cool shows coming up next week. Joe Blackheart from Pat Raskett is going to be on the show. Yeah, that's right. We are going to complete the Swedish Pirate Band Trilogy with Joe Blackheart of Pat Raskett. Week after that, Moonsun Kim. Uh, she has created a pirate webcomic called Whispers in the Wind that is very cool. So we'll talk to her. Mark Pacquian, uh, creator of a Treasure Island board game, is coming up. All sorts of cool stuff. And, of course, I will be following up on all those great guest suggestions uh, that you guys gave me over on the Facebook page. Working on that this week as well. And I can't wait to talk to all those people because you guys came up with some very cool, interesting people that I do not know yet. And I'm happy to talk with them on the show. So we'll be doing that. All right. So that's it. I will uh, talk to you next week back at the home port. Bye. <laughs>